Con noi Karen Ciupka, Vice President, Vice Presidente Esecutivo del Consumer Electronic Show presso la Consumer Technology Association e l'Associazione Americana di Categoria. 2200 aziende di elettronica di consumo nell'intero ecosistema tecnologico. Karen, membro dell'associazione da 30 anni, ha contribuito alla crescita stessa della fiera che è passata da 1.300 a 4.500 espositori. Pensate, vi lascio a queste cifre, ogni anno il Consumer Electronic Show attrae oltre 180.000 visitatori, 60.000 provenienti da paesi esteri. Hi Karen, it's a pleasure. Hello, thank you so much, grazie. Ok Karen, if you want uh, uh, the introduction, I'm okay. here with you. Ok, thank you. Well, thank you everyone for being here today. And um, it's very wonderful to see all the people talking about technology and whether it's a revolution, good or bad, and what will come of it. Um, we're very excited to be, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, CES is uh, the world's largest trade show that actually focuses on technology. And I guess I should ask by a raise of hands, how many of you have actually been to CES? Great, I see some hands up there. So the Consumer Technology Association is a US-based trade association, and we actually are the ones who own CES. I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview of what you would see from this last show. State ovviamente vedendo alcune delle immagini cosa succede all'interno della fiera di cui vi stiamo parlando. So it's hard to put into words sometimes everything that you could see at CES. We represent large companies, we represent small companies. As an association, we have 2,200 technology members, and 80% uh, of them are actually small companies, and about 200 are startups. This is a little bit of uh, the information about who comes from all over the world. And so one of the reasons why I wanted to point this out is because I think it's important to understand that what makes CES interesting is that people from all over the world bring their ideas and technologies to showcase and to give uh, inspiration to others about what can happen with technology. Okay, so we represent many brands, as I said, big and small, and a lot of them um, are, you know, uh, companies that are there not only showcasing new technologies, but also looking for partnerships and people that they could build business relationships with. One of the key trends that you would see at CES and one of the key trends that is happening is uh, transportation and automotive technologies. It's changing the future of mobility. It's helping with improving traffic. Uh, it's also helping to save lives. Almost 94% of crashes are due to somebody for distractive driving. And so technology is helping to find a way to make people be able to uh, not only drive safer, but also to uh, be driving more efficiently and to make traffic work more efficiently. It's also helping those who are disabled or who cannot, uh, or, or who are also older that can no longer drive be able to become mobile. And this is just one of the trends that you will see at CES. We have over nine, automa auto nine automakers uh, showcasing at CES and 150 companies overall that are just focused on automotive technology. Another key area for us is smart cities. 
Smart Cities is connecting everything from energy products to traffic management to even your home. And this is also an area that is, is growing fast. It's also tied to what is happening in 5G technologies. Before I st talk a little bit about resilience, 5G technologies is uh, the platform that will help make information transfer quicker to each other and help with some of the things that we're talking about earlier with AI. So it will help that, that processing of, of, of products talking to each, other, to each other. Another new topic that we will be discussing is resilience. And this is actually a really important area of technology because as many of you know, there are just more and more disasters happening all over the world. And while technology does a lot of good, it's also something that when there is no electricity or there is no um, you know, it power, that it doesn't always work. And so one of the areas of resiliency is really looking at how do we help areas of the world recover faster. Right now, today, there's a hurricane going on in the United States and a typhoon happening in Asia. And Resilience Technologies is looking at how do these communities rebuild? How do they get back online faster so that they are actually able to continue their businesses and or their life? As you heard a little bit earlier, another key trend is artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is being used throughout many different industries. Uh, healthcare, it's being used in architecture, in design, uh, and it is helping to uh, create uh, just, just whole new opportunities for businesses. Another interesting area of technology that's growing is also in sports. Sports technology is um, not only looking at how athletes are performing. So for example, um, there are technologies that can help an athlete know that their body is starting to dehydrate. And the reason that that becomes important is because if they dehydrate, they cramp. And so if you're in the middle of a soccer game, you don't want to be cramping. And so having a, a shirt that can measure your uh, levels of, of, um, of hydration becomes very important. And you can see technologies like this at CES, but they're also changing the way the fan experiences the game and giving you more data, more information about what's happening on the screen, uh, more information just about how athletes are performing. They're also changing the advertising world because it enables stadiums to be able to give more immersive experience for advertisers. And this is another key trend that we're seeing. Actually, the World Cup used a lot of new technology this year. And as you go forward in the Olympics, there's also a lot of interesting technologies that will be built in for the Tokyo Games. As I mentioned, we have many different brand, uh, brands at CES, but not only technology brands, brands like um, uh, large corporations like Procter & Gamble, Unilever, companies that are direct to consumer. And they're coming there because they're trying to learn about how technologies can help them connect more, how they can develop ways that they can stay in touch with consumers, or how their products can actually work more uh, to help consumers. This area that we have is called C-Space. And now, probably one of the most exciting areas of the show is called Eureka Park. It is a startup area for CES. We have over 1,200 companies that will be there in 2019 CES. And it's a very interesting place because we have companies coming from all over the world. There are 40 countries that are um, represented in Eureka Park. And companies come here because they want to showcase their technologies. But they also are looking for partnerships and new deals. And there's also a great opportunity for larger corporations to come in and rather than having to go through research and development to develop a product, sometimes they will see something right there that they can e immediately put into use. So it's an incredibly vibrant area. And it's interesting because as we talk about uh, new deals, one of the exhibitors last year was an 80-year-old woman. She, had, she was not a technologist. She was, a, I think, a school teacher. And she's from Florida. And she, uh, in Florida, there's a problem because it gets very, very hot. And sometimes um, people, as they're driving their kids to school for whatever reason, they change their routine and they forget that their child is in the back seat. They leave the car 
and an hour later they come back and the child is dead. And unfortunately, it happens uh, more than one would think. She was so tired of hearing about this tragedy happening in Florida that she decided she needed to do something about it. So at 80 years old, she developed a technology that can help sense whether something was left in the back seat of the car. And that way, it would help alert the driver to remember to get, get whatever it was. So whether it was an animal or a baby, it would help prompt them to remember to take, um, take that out of the back seat of the car. And this was an 80-year-old woman who never was a technologist. She liked to study technology. She would read technology magazines. She liked to read magazines like Popular Science in the US, but decided she wanted to do something different and took a chance, created a company, and created a technology and showcased it for the very first time last year. So you're never too young to start, or I mean, never too old to start something new. She's 80 years old. My mother's 84. I told her that my mother, I told my mother she needs to improve her game. She's not pulling her weight anymore. <laughs> so CES is the global stage for innovation. And I just talked a little bit about some of the technologies that you would see. But actually, there are so many more, and it's, it is hard to put into words. Um, you know, as I talked a little bit about some of what's happening um, with, within Eureka Park. But for instance, we have many companies that are showcasing healthcare products and how people can monitor themselves or, or monitor themselves for things like diabetes so that they're no longer having to draw blood every couple hours to measure their sugar levels. Um, you can see technologies in, in AI, which really uh, a lot of it is, there, there's a lot on voice activation, including um, both Google and Alexa uh, products, as well as others. And voice is also becoming a really exciting area to, um, to see how people are interacting it and how it is learning. Um, as you saw from the example of the movie Her, uh, that was just probably four or five years ago the movie came out and it sounded ridiculous. But now we find ourselves talking to a device and asking it questions and it answering. And it's one of the things I love to do is I love to ask my Alexa just random questions and see how she answers it. And it's absolutely amazing how much she learns each time I ask a question. Uh, and that's very exciting news. Um, so these are just a little sample of some of what is changing the world. And I think that there's a lot of great opportunities to improve, live because, improve lives because of some of these transformations that are taking place. And you know, I would encourage any of you, if you can, to come to CES. I think it's a great place where you could um, stimulate your mind, stimulate your ideas. Sometimes strange things are there. I had, there was a company that got a lot of attention because it created a fork that would tell you you're eating too much. And one would think you wouldn't need your fork to tell you that. Um, but there was one that was created. And what's interesting is maybe that product will not do very well somewhere, but someone may find that technology and take it and build it into something that does something extraordinary. So it's really a great opportunity and environment. And I think that um, opportunities like this are also great because it really helps to bring out new ideas, new partnerships, and hopefully inspire a whole new generation of problem solvers. So I'd like to thank you all today for inviting me, and I hope I can see you in Las Vegas.